This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where you feel like drowning all the time. In this series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. If you are new to my channel, thank you very much for clicking on my avatar. And if you have been here before, thanks for the loyalty. This week's focus is on how to deal with your supervisor. Since there are many aspects to this topic, I've broken it into a few parts. This particular tutorial focuses on the role of the supervisor and also your role as the researcher. If you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. Let's get right into it. To understand the role of the supervisor, you must understand the roles of the other most prominent people in the research circle. There is you, the researcher slash student, the supervisor, of course, and then the lecturer. And if you are a PhD student, the circle gets significantly smaller. It's pretty much just you and the internet. By understanding the roles and responsibilities, you are more likely to have reasonable expectations from the people in your circle. And this could reduce the severity of friction amongst you. But friction there will be, make no mistake. First, let's start with the lecturer. This is a person who introduces and explains research concepts. They also tell you about the deadlines and the administrative process for handing in your assignments. But mostly, their focus is on providing you with the tools and techniques to be successful on your research journey. Then there is you, the researcher. You have to create a quality paper, dissertation or thesis by adjusting and applying the tools that the lecturer introduced. Now passing on some of the best advice I received from my professor when I was a wee master student, you, as in the researcher, are ultimately responsible and accountable for your deliverable, no one else. Not your lecturer, not your supervisor, not your course convener, not your mom, just you. And then of course you have the supervisor, whose job it is to evaluate if you are adjusting and applying the tools appropriately as it relates to your topic. They are also responsible to assess the overall quality of your work and for giving you advice when the direction or quality of your thesis is lacking. In certain fields, and especially if your study is part of a larger research project your department is undertaking, the supervisor will also be responsible for funding your research and providing you with access to field data if you are not the primary data collecting entity. For this tutorial, I will only focus on the first three responsibilities as those are universal. Let's look at a practical example of how these relationships work in a typical research setting focusing on the responsibilities of each person. The scenario is you, as the researcher, has to apply for ethical approval. The responsibility of the lecturer in this case is to make you aware that there is a thing called ethical approval. It is their job to inform you why ethical approval is important and why you will not be permitted to continue with your research if you don't have it. In this instance, the lecturer may only cover the process of obtaining ethical approval from the university, and they may throw in an example or two. You, the researcher, now has to figure out what type of ethical approval is necessary specifically for your project. In other words, you need to adjust and apply the advice of your lecturer to your own research. So let's say your study is about understanding how often school kids use Instagram for educational purposes. In your first draft, you include that you need ethical approval from the university, obviously, and you need ethical approval from the school board. You send that draft to your supervisor. Your supervisor will then check if your plan for ethical approval is appropriate for your topic and they will provide you with feedback. At this point, they may make you aware of the things that you have missed. They may ask you to consider the country's law regarding speaking to minors in an official capacity, and they may also ask you to consider other governing bodies that schools belong to other than just the school board. Note, they will not outright say this is who you missed or this is the person that you need to contact. That is not their role. Neither is it the role of the lecturer for that matter. It is your job as the researcher to research what type of ethical approval you need. All the supervisor does is evaluate and give you pointers. That said, as a supervisor myself, there are times when I provide my students with more concrete suggestions, but this is done on a case-by-case -case basis, because as a supervisor, I need to ensure that I don't rob my students of a learning experience. Anyway, coming back to the ethical approval scenario, once the supervisor have given you their two cents, you now need to make adjustments. After doing some more research, you realize that you certainly missed a couple of things. So in your second draft, you then say, I need ethical approval from the university, school board, the parent of the student if they are under the age of 18, the student themselves if they are of legal age, and I need approval from the Department of Education. 
To reiterate, understanding the roles and responsibilities help you with having realistic expectations of the other parties. A lot of friction between students and supervisors are due to this type of misunderstanding. You are in charge and accountable for your own research journey. The lecturer brings awareness and equips you with the tools and techniques, and the supervisor acts as your guide. That said, as much as knowing the roles and responsibilities will help you, you may want to check if you vibe with your supervisor. If you can see that you are not going to work well with this person because of personality clashes, try and find someone else. It is very unlikely that your supervisor will insist on having you as a student if you don't want to be there. It goes without saying that it is better to do this in the beginning of the process as opposed to midway or at the end. That's it from me. If you have a question, please add it to the comment section. Like this, share this, subscribe to this. This is Dr. J, signing off.